come of my life. This is the culmination of my life. You know, I've basically engineered this, which is him bragging. He's only one part of a gaggle, you know, that did that. Why would the little bastard brag that he's causing all this pain? I guess it's just... Well, he, he's bragging for his whole group because he's an integral part of it. And as you know, he got his start by... Uh, deceiving Jewish people in the country in which he was born while working for the Gestapo so that they could confiscate the goods of Jews, he being Jewish himself. Did you know that? Uh, I knew that he was Jewish and that he, he was connected to some of the thuggery, yes. It's kind of no, like Madoff. He's a bad, bad person. But anyway, the arrogance Well, is, no, no, hold on. Tell us more about that, that because, hold on, hold on. I, I mean, I vaguely knew about that, but uh, refresh me fully about him. I and mean, I knew Madeline Albright's dad was a commissariat who killed over a million. That's mainline information and all the stolen arts in her house of people they robbed, including Jews, but also other people. Uh, I know that most people, uh, John Chalikashvili's dad was the top Nazi in Poland helping. Do, I mean, I know uh, same thing with, you know, all of these people. Same thing was a big Brzezinski. But uh, you're saying that, uh, that Soros, uh, tell us about that. Well, Soros, very simply, was uh, uh, probably... 12, 14 years old at the time, and the Germans had invaded, and the Germans were rounding up Jews uh, to send them to internment camps and slave labor camps and extermination camps or whatever. And his job, because he was taken on with the Gestapo, I, uh, I assume he told them that he wasn't Jewish. And Stay there. Let's hear about it when we get back. Got a break, Bob. More straight ahead, ladies and gentlemen, with Bob Chapman, internationalforecaster.com. Check it out today. Our site's at prisonplanet.tv. Like to have another kiss. Yeah, most of the alpha maggots that work for the New World Order work for the Soviets or the Nazis, and then their children are than the people running things now, but I uh, knew that Soros had some uh, bad things going on in his background. Uh, go ahead and finish up with that story, Bob Chapman. Very despicable, because what he did was go to Jewish families and tell them, look, I'm Jewish, and, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll help you hide your stuff and get you out of the country and that sort of thing. And uh, he found out where their wealth was, and, you know, the next day they marched in with the Gestapo, and took their wealth and then, you know, put them on a train and sent them someplace. And so, you know, this is the worst of the worst. It's just like Madoff and what he did to all the Jewish charities and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it doesn't get any worse than that as a human being. And I just want to let people know uh, this arrogant, connected uh, member of the, the Illuminati, where he's coming from. And it, it's not a very uh, illustrious history, that's for sure. Yeah, I had I had seen that, but I, I'm I'm glad you gave us more details. Well, you know about Albright. Her dad is on record killing a million, and then stealing everybody's stuff. I mean, these people are sick. And then she was on 60 Minutes with all these million dollar famous paintings behind her, stolen from famous families uh, by the Soviets. They really want to do that here. I mean, look at how all the Trotskyites came over here and founded the neocon movement. I mean, it's so weird that every founding neocon was a Trotskyite who then decided they'd take over the conservative movement, and they've done it. Then you've got the left over here. They're all controlled by a bunch of criminals, Bob. That's right. And it's always been that way, and that's what this whole bag is all about. Uh, this is a uh, uh, white-collar criminal element, if you may, and, and some of them before were not white-collar, but they are now. And that, and that again is their arrogance. They can get away with anything. I mean, like, look as an example. Yesterday, Carlisle Corporation was, uh, uh, was fined, I, I'll guess, at 20 million. It's in this issue coming out tomorrow. And what they were doing in order to get funds from the state of New York to invest for the state of New York, they were paying people off. And they were doing it through intermediaries, hoping that uh, if something happened and they get caught, the intermediaries would be blamed. And, and of course, they said they didn't know what they were doing. And, of course, well, Bob, I had a state senator the, on the your... Point, the, the, Go ahead. the bottom line is this. There's two sets of jurisprudence in America. The guys at the top never get put in jail, or hardly ever, and they pay a fine, and they go back and do it the next day. 
The average American goes and does that. He's doing five to ten. Absolutely. But the point I was going to interrupt was it's confirmed there's federal bounties and they have to increase them each year to even get their quota to kidnap kids and that they're told how to lie. Just like recruiters are told to tell kids, sign the paper or you'll be arrested. And then they get promoted when they get caught. And she was giving documented cases where they don't just have bounties on kids, but where the adoption agencies that may be getting $400,000 for the blonde haired blue eyed kid, they say, we need this many this week, go out and get them. And they go out and comb and get them. And it may be pedophiles who want, they say, I want a seven year old blonde haired blue eyed, or I want a dark haired girl, or I want a black girl. And they literally have been caught. She, she's you've got the documents to, where they go out and grab your kid and they're getting payoffs and legal money. I mean, pretty soon, uh, I mean, will it take bureaucrats eating our children on the front lawn, barbecuing them, and, and then if you don't like it, the SWAT team comes? I mean, I mean, how evil does this government have to get, Bob? How, how illegitimate? Well, I think a lot of Americans realize this, and uh, I got a report last week from several different gun shows, people standing 15 deep, uh, waiting to buy a minimum, they wouldn't sell small lots, of 1,000 rounds or more of ammunition, at any given time and they at this one particular show i got details on they brought in two of these great big large trailers uh, full of all kinds of cased ammunition and uh, in three or four hours it was all gone so i think the american public's uh catching on they know something's going to happen and they're trying to prepare for it because they know that their system hasn't been working for them I agree, Bob, and I think the dirty bankers are used to rolling over Cuba and, and Cambodia and Russia and China. Uh, I, I think they've miscalculated, and I think America is going to find its old vicious instincts, and it's going to be a hell pit. It's going to be an absolute wall-to-wall -wall bloodbath unless the New World Order backs off now. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We are not taking any prisoners, and if they think they're going to hide, they're not. We'll find them. Well, that's the issue. When, the, when this war is all... You know, said and done. I want to make sure all the bankers are arrested, and I mean the elite bankers, not your corner grocer, you know, the delivery boy. Bob Chapman, stay with us. Financial news straight ahead. This is real, ladies and gentlemen. This is an address rehearsal. You're only alive one time. Make it count. Choose which side you're on. Get out of the middle of the road. Don't be hot or cold, but lukewarm. Choose. You're going to serve the new world order? Or you're going to serve liberty and freedom and the God of creation? That is the choice. All right, let's go back to Bob Chapman. Bob, I I've been asking the questions here. Uh, I want you to take a few minutes out to get into anything that you think is important. I would imagine that always seems to be metals. Where do you see the market going in metals, but also in other commodities? Uh, we've seen gold and silver racing up. Then the big banks trying to pound it down, but it seems they're not having as much success. Chinese starting to dump the dollar. Other nations publicly dumping the dollar. Uh, how long can this hold, or can they just keep playing games forever? Because normally gold would be going down in the summer. What are we going to see this fall? Well, I think the rule rules about gold going down at this time or that time, uh, you can throw them out the window. Um, because of the intercession into the markets by the United States government and others uh, in the manipulations that have gone on, that anything can happen at any time. Uh, the suppression of gold has happened because central banks, in conjunction with one another, were gold sellers. And they have been over the past 10 years or more. And, uh, you know, we saw uh, England selling gold at 275, sold out three quarters of their gold, and now they're offside about seven or eight billion dollars that they threw down the sewer, so to speak. But the point is this. They only had 33,000 tons. My guess is they probably get less than 5,000 tons left. And how they've been deceiving everybody is that they have been leasing gold to bullion market makers, which would be J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs, etc. And they would take this gold 
and they would either pay a half a percent interest or no interest, or sometimes they get paid to take the gold off the central bank's hands. And they would sell it into the market to depress the price at certain times. Now, what's happened in the interim, they didn't want, they, the central banks, didn't want people to see them doing that, so they leased the gold to the to the uh, bullion dealers, who in turn sold it. The little trick here is that in their accounting procedure, all of these central banks are holding this leased gold on the books and still having had it when, in fact, it was sold long ago. So I tell you that because they don't have much gold left. That's what I was about to ask you. I've seen that in the news where a lot of big nations and corporations are starting to say, we want our gold out of your vaults. Well, Germany just asked for theirs. Switzerland asked for theirs. And, you know, I got a question today by email. Well, why are they doing that? Well, very simply, they don't trust the Illuminus.